Woof here, Woof Den Hobbies. Today's video is part one of a multi-part event. Now the reason why it's a multi-part event is because I didn't want the video to be like 45 minutes to an hour long, honestly. Um, I know I have a hard time getting through videos that long, so I figured I'd cut it down, break it up a little bit. In today's video, we're gonna be starting painting on a special request, which is a first for me. I've never had somebody be like, hey, Woof, I like what you do, paint this for me. You know, usually I paint things and give them away. Like, hey, look, I paint this. This looks cool. Do you like it? Yeah, okay, here, have it. But I was presented with this little gem. This is a resin cast Stanley stat statue. Yeah, we'll say statue. Now, the person ordered this online. And it got shipped to them and everything. This, <laughs> this thing came with its own set of challenges. But... Even though it had its own set of challenges, I was able to explore and experiment and try new things, which helped me grow in the process, which was phenomenal. Now, Stan Lee, I know I've probably said this before, Stan Lee has a very special place in my heart. I actually got to meet him once on a crosswalk over a highway, and his bodyguards almost beat me up, which was fantastic. I mean, I wasn't one of those groupies who was like, oh my god, Stan Lee! Oh! I was just like... Hey, look, it's Stan Lee. How you doing? And they're like, whoa, you need to back up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Anyway, so I digress. So Stan Lee has a lot of interviews where he speaks about things that hold true to really anything and everything, which is phenomenal. And I think, you know, a lot of people should listen to some of the stuff they has to say, especially when it comes to being creative. Now I'm going to show you a clip in a few minutes that's kind of explaining what I mean here. Personally, I believe everybody, no matter what your hobby is, should have their own little quirk, their own little expression, shall I say, to set them apart from everyone else. Because if everybody was the same, there would be no Bob Rosses, there'd be no Bill Nye the Science Guys, there'd be no crazy guy in a wolf mask painting miniatures, you know, and, and I think it's so important to separate yourself from the normal, to be creative, to express yourself. Now, in this clip, this clip is from Web of Stories. They're on YouTube. You can check them out. They have a lot of great um, Stan Lee clips on there that you can listen to. They're phenomenal. Uh, this one in particular is from Stan Lee's It's Clobbering Time. And basically, he's talking about expressions and how he came up with Excelsior. Now, I'm not playing the whole video, I'm just cutting it, and I'm playing a small section of that video. But I will post the link to that video in the comment section below if you want to check it out. So, let's go ahead, watch this quick clip, and then we're going to hop in and do a little bit of painting. Mm -hmm. So, I dug up the word Excelsior, which to me is wonderful. It's an old English word which means upward and onward to greater glory. <laughs> It's, I found out later, it's actually the, emblem, the the motto on the great seal of the state of New York. I didn't know that at the mm -hmm. time. So at any rate, I would end everything with the word Excelsior. Thank goodness nobody has used it yet. In fact, I think we've copyrighted it. <laughs> okay, so we are primed and we are ready to lay down some paint. Now, I didn't do anything crazy. No zenithal highlighting. None of that shit just primed it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint his shirt. Now, the person I'm painting this for specifically asked, it was a request to paint as close to the Fantastic Four color as possible. So we're gonna drop in with this aquatic turquoise. This aquatic turquoise, out of all the blues in my arsenal, which I, I have a lot of blues in my arsenal for some reason, is my favorite. I love this color. We're gonna do a few test sprays on our construction paper, make sure it's good to go. And then we're just gonna go to town on his shirt. Just spray it all over, we're gonna make sure we have good coverage. And we're gonna make sure we get it covered everywhere, which I guess that's technically the same thing. But anyway, I did mask off his face, his pants and all that, the gauntlet, because I didn't want the overspray getting on there. A lot of times when I'm base coating something um, with the airbrush, I tend to get a little crazy. It ends up on my hands, it ends up on the model, it ends up on the paper who knows it ends up everywhere and it's it gets a little out of hand so we taped it off just to be safe okay so 
The shirt's looking super nice. Now off camera, I did put in a little bit of dark blue shadows in the creases, just to kind of give it a little bit of depth. I didn't do too much, but just, just a little bit. It goes a long way sometimes, which I'll contradict myself in a minute. Now we're gonna come in with some light brown. We're gonna put that light brown on our palette. We're gonna come in with some thinner medium and a little bit of retarder. Now, you're probably like, Woof, what are you doing? That's weird. But, see, I'm experimenting. And I'm trying some new things. And I wanted to paint his pants super thin and super wet. And the reason why I'm saying that, and that sounds super weird, but if I got any on the shirt, I would have been super pissed. So, with it being, you know, thinned down and with some retarder in there, if I got it on the shirt, I could clean it up easier. That was kind of my thinking behind that. But this all took about three coats to get where I wanted it to. And I'm pretty happy with it. Those are some nice khakis. Like he's looking fresh. Straight out of Target fresh. Like you won't find these type of khakis at no Walmart. That's for sure. Just joking. I shop. Everyone shops at Walmart. There's probably nice khakis at Walmart. Anyway, we're going to come back in with this light brown. We're going to put it in the pot. And then we're going to mix in a little bit of this earth. Now, for this part, I was going to go in and paint some shadows on his pants. I did a test spray. I thought it looked good at the time. And then I brought it in and I tried spraying the creases of his pants. Come to find out, it was way too light. I mean, way too light. Like, it was not very shadow-esque at all. So, I had to make some adjustments. So, we added more earth to it. And now it came out looking super muddy, which... Hey, mud's a good shadow, am I right? Now, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't graduate with, you know, a bachelor's degree in shadowology or a doctorate in the mystic arts of shadow painting here. It's just, you know, the only thing I know about shadows is the shadow realm from like Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, it's what I got here. So we're just spray spraying it on all the creases and everywhere I think the shadow should go in his crotchal region, all that. I don't have like a light source here. I'm just kind of painting it to make it look good. All right, so we have the shadows done. I also painted the Fantastic Four logo on his shirt off camera and taped his shoes because there's a very crucial part coming up. One of which is my favorite thing to do. And we're gonna paint the base. You should always, always paint your base. All right, so we're gonna come in with a matte black. I love this matte black. This is one of my favorite blacks. And we're gonna spray the base. Do a few test sprays on our piece of paper there. Looks nice. And we're just gonna to go to town. Now I don't need to tape anything else off because I can go back and touch that all up later. More importantly is protecting his pants and his shirt from being sprayed. And we're just gonna spray over the whole base, make sure we have a nice even coat and makes you know make sure we, it looks its best. And honestly, that's it for that's it for part one. We painted the back of the chair and the chair too, and that's that's roughly it. So I'll see you back at the hobby desk. Well, that concludes part one of this multi-part series. We just got his pants, his shirt painted, the base, and the back of the chair. Next, we're gonna start branching out, painting the chair and the gauntlet, and then we have the books on the side and the Spider-Man mask. So that'll be the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're inspired with a brief message from the man, the myth, the legend, Stan Lee. And, you know, keep hobbying. So until next time, I'll see you at the hobby desk.